Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the finale of season two of Never Have I Ever. What a brilliant show, Spirit. Episode nine and Ted. Uh, some amazing stuff happens in these final two episodes. And it leaves us on our toes for season three, which I believe will be dropping this year because I'm so behind on Never Have I Ever. It was a show I loved when I watched season one originally. And um, I finally went and went, you know what? I'm going to watch season two. And I've got to admit, it's been absolutely phenomenal. I loved how early they got the, <coughs> they messed up the relationship with Ben and Paxton because it built for a better series. It brought Anise's character into it, who now has become a background character. You've seen Fabiola's character develop with Eve and her friends, trying to prove herself to um, and be something she's not. Eleanor's relationship with Zac Efron 2.0, I think... It's brilliant that she's finally an hour away from him. She's realised her relationship with her parents is a lot stronger. Um, well, her mother left, but her stepmom, you know. Um, and one, of, you know, there's so many emotional scenes in this last few episodes. Obviously, you know, in the, I think that's it. At the end of last episode, you see that Devi spots her mother with the doctor. Um, not the doctor, not doctor. Oh. Uh, doctor Jackson, who I think is a brilliant character who deserves to be with Devi's mom. But her anger comes out in this. She gets called crazy by her own mother. She goes to therapy and she's questioning everything. This series, she's hurt Anissa, Fabiola, uh, Eleanor, Eleanor's boyfriend, uh, Ben, Paxton, her mother. Uh, her grandmother slaps her in one of these episodes. I think it was just such a good moment. But it was very comical in the sense of... Uh, <coughs> I thought a funny moment, but she was a very serious moment. I loved everything about it. Her grandmother basically put her in a place and said, you have no right to do or say what your mother does. You have to respect what she wants in life. And if she wants to date or do this or that, you have to understand it. Devi's mom and Devi have such a great bond in this last couple of episodes. You see the connectivity over their father um, and husband. And I think... It just is done in such a good way because they finally have an understanding. The therapy session finally went well. And obviously the best and most predictable part of the two episodes was Paxton coming to prom. You know, he had been tackling this thing of he didn't want to be seen in public with DV because of everything he, she put him through. And it's totally understandable. He's become such a brilliant student. I loved, you know, because one of my favorite topics to, you know, learn about and be educated on is the Holocaust. And I thought it was truly amazing to see that be brought into this and to have Paxton deliver it bring a survivor i don't know if it's a real survivor but a survivor of the holocaust and i just i, I thought it was brilliant i think um uh, yeah it was 1944 so it, yeah it was definitely but yeah the japanese he was part of japanese in america and he was taken to one of these camps and i just think paxton has developed in such a brilliant character educationally he gets his grades up um, he, he, he finally sees that DV is the reason why he is. The, this is what I said in the last episode. It's always tough for me to pick between Paxton and Ben. DV makes Paxton a better person. DV and Ben have a solid relationship. They're very educationally good together. And I also love this scene where you know they're on the dance floor and then Ben and um, Eleanor have a moment and he goes, oh, it's always been him. And Eleanor's like, well, it hasn't. You know, there was this point and this point and Ben's like, oh, wow, really? And the reason why Ben cares so much about DV now, he never truly fell out of love. And he sees Anisa as not someone he enjoys being around, but he just enjoys making out with. She let him down in the, uh, the Great Gatsby case. <clears throat> she's not intelligent. She's not that smart. She's intelligent to an extent, but she's not on Ben's level. Devi always pushed Ben like she pushes Paxton. I love the relationship. To be to be honest, I want Paxton to be with Devi. I think they are best for each other. But ultimately, I do think she may end up with Ben. Um, I just... Paxton is a better human being when he's with Devi. Devi's made a lot of mistakes. She's been through hell this series with her friends and family. 
Um, she's been head to toe of her grandma. She's helped out her cousin. Like I said, that was in one of the episodes. The cousin, when she stuck up for herself, she put her name on the paper. She walked out on all the people and said she would go to hell and back to make sure they suffered if anything went wrong with the paper. She was a brilliant character in the series. I love how she walked out on the marriage thing at the end and ultimately went to the karaoke to meet up with one of the teachers who had had a good admiration for her. I just think Never Have I Ever Season 2 is very well put together. Devi is an act- the, the, the actress who plays Devi. I still think she's quite wooden in places, but I believe she's very good at delivering certain scenes. Her relationship with Fabiola Eleanor was brilliant this season. I'm glad Zac Efron was pied off this series. Um... I'm glad Fabiola won Queen and Queen with Eve. I think they're a brilliant fit and that she finally came out and admitted herself who she was, you know, the robotics geek. She fixed the robot up. She put the robot outfit on. Um, You know, Jonah, I loved his um, little involvement. Him coming out as a gay guy is obviously quite huge in high school, as you can see how comfortable he is with his own sexuality, how he rebel. um, resonate with Fabiola and have her being a girl and it basically just helps her you know it was a really good scene a really good send off I never have I ever season two and a great build in season three I don't know what stories are in store I hope they don't repeat the same mistakes of her going back and forth back and forth um you know pissing her off pissing him off breaking up breaking up you know they don't have to do that you make good structures, they go on dates, you make a future, you know, college is obviously what season three is going to be about. Um, and I just think season three has the potential to be brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Season two is definitely a 10 out of 10 for me. I don't see any errors um, that weren't rectified. You know, there was issues towards the start, the anger, the mental side to her. And I think I reflect most on this in 13 Reasons Why. Clay Jensen made so many mistakes in season four, but because of everything he'd been through in the first three seasons, it all it all came back to just destroy him and hurt him. And by the end of season four, he was a better person. He was cleansed. And that's what I see from Devi at the moment. She was cleansed. She spoke about everything. She's with the guy she's tried to get with since episode one of season one. She's in a better place with her family. They're all on a good place. And I loved everything about this. Go check out now. Never have I ever. Seasons one and two are airing on Netflix right now. Check out all my season two reviews on the channel if you have not yet. It was a phenomenal show. And I believe everyone should check it out because you'll have a laugh. You'll have a great time. You may have you may have, may even cry. You know, it was emotional towards last few episodes. But um, yeah. Season three coming very soon. I may put a prediction video out as I want to talk about a few things I'd love to see in season three as I'm going to be doing the same thing with sex education. So do not miss that when I drop that. All the best. Take care. See you in the next one. Goodbye.